I'm sitting with Radha um, in the shadow of Arunachala in Tiruvannamalai on the Shiva Yatri uh, on the March the 2nd and we're going to talk about um, some questions for a book Blueprints for Awakening and before we start the questions I understand that uh, you have something to say about this title Blueprints yeah, blueprints can be made for awakening because there are no blueprints available. But that's the beauty of it. The moment you make the blueprint, see, you are freezing it. You're freezing the moment. See, it's a mystery. The whole awakening is a mystery. The, the, the moment you make the blueprint, the beauty is gone. And the, every, you can't make a blueprint. It's not a common thing for everybody. It's different for everybody, different path, different way. So there can't be a common blueprint. So <laughs> I think you're right, yeah. I agree with you, yeah. Yeah. Can be. I think probably by approaching different teachers who have a different path in a way or a different uh, experience or different kind of awakening, I'm asking them to uh, share that, you know, to share their blueprint. And perhaps, no, I don't have one. <laughs> What's that? I don't have one. I was not awakened. You don't have any blueprint. Yeah, because I was not awakened. Because I never slept. Right, right. I never slept. You were always awake. Yeah. The awakening comes is a relative term. The moment you sleep, the awakening comes. But one who was never slept, there is no awakening. So awakening the tongue itself is meaningless now, for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first question is very good for you then. So uh, these questions are designed to unfold and explain the teachings of Ramana Mahashi as set out in his original booklet, Who Am I? and Self-Inquiry. Okay. So the first question is, uh, Ramana proposed the fundamental question, Who am I? Who are you? Yeah, Ramana proposed the fundamental question to the sadhakas to control the mind, not to the masters, not to the one who is already awake. The moment you ask me, who am I? The moment you st I started describing myself, it's ugly. The beauty has gone and I started limiting the unlimited. I'm trying to finish the infinite. infinite. Understand? The moment I start telling, I am this, I am that, it's all in the books. The moment I start telling it, it looks ugly, so ugly. And things look infinite. I can say I am consciousness, I am bliss, I am this, I am that. But I am neither of this. I am not this, I am not that. I am what I am. So this who am I goes with the sadhakas. <laughs> Who try to find out, figure out what they, who are they really? Not one though, not to the one who knows. Who is he? So are you saying that you know who you are and who you are is this moment? No, I say that who am I can't be, unex can't be comprehended. Like it's unexplainable. You should be that to know that. I can quote books telling I am the self, I am, I am Brahman, I am what, I am this, I am that. But these are all only dictionary terms, right? That's not going to give any good idea. It's infinite. We say people can't understand the infinite, so we started putting words like I am compassionate, I am Brahman, I am limitless, all these sort of things. I am consciousness. Suppose you change the term in the dictionary consciousness with stupidity. I have stupidity too. <laughs> right? Consciousness is a dictionary term. Change it into stupidity, I am stupidity then. So it's a mind. 
try to comprehend something mm. which can't be so these words are needed for that if you really want to know how am i no way to know so you're just who you are in this moment yeah? as it is now in this present moment yeah forever i'm the same i'm changeless but at this moment i take any time of if you talk about a time any point of your time i'm the same either is past or present or future in which you can see changeless many western seekers the people who come into your satsang are come to india looking for enlightenment as though it is an experience what is enlightenment is a mind game is a what you call mind trick see always this mind wants something higher if you go to the material world it wants to be rich if you go to the emotional world it wants to be it wants to be loved if it is a spiritual it wants enlightenment always the higher things mind seeks there is no such thing like enlightenment there is no such thing as awaken we are already that we are already illuminated we are not ignorant to be enlightened ignorance need the enlightenment ignorance is the mind it needs the enlightenment there is no mind we are not the mind so not the ego trips nothing else Maybe people who are satisfied with the material world, they try to watch spirituality and they find these words attractive. Only to find out is nothing exists like that. So my next question is a bit funny because if there's no enlightenment, there's no qualifications for enlightenment. Because my question is, are there any qualifications for enlightenment? Qualification is a very valid term. <laughs> very valid term. Who is here to qualify anybody to that you will be or qualified to be enlightened? Who can say that? Enlightenment is a self myth. Then where are the qualification comes from? It's just grace. It decides. So is is it necessary to do some spiritual practice is sadhan a necessary necessary to know that the necessary to know that ultimate truth is real what i am talking there is no enlightenment is record enlightenment is an illusion our mind is an illusion to know that we need the sadhana but sadhana alone will not bring you that reality sadhana is required to know the truth to understand the truth suppose you go to a farmer and tell him he is god he will know believe he love at us he needs he needs basic sadhana to understand the ultimate reality to accept this reality rather this is real this advaita is real to know that he needs a sadhana not for anything else not for enlightenment so in a way it's useful to be able to get to know the mind to see the mind and to know that that is not who you are in that way it's useful yeah to know that ultimately mind is an illusion to understand that it's not going to the sadhana is not ever going to bring you that uh, what you call uh, the final cut it's not going to through sadhana you can never uh, lose the identification but to know, to know that as a, as a knowledge as a understanding the sadhana is required and is it also required to to quiet in the mind to to make a satvic mind yeah but what happens mind is an illusion but the moment you say it's an illusion people can't accept this they can't find they are struggling with the mind every day every day fighting with the mind so this sadhana is struggle to make your foe into your friend by doing sadhana your mind becomes your friend all these things you are fighting with the mind do the sadhana do meditation is going to become your friend the seed but still mind exist the illusion exist the sad truth whether friend or foe it's a illusion from nightmare it becomes a sweet dream the soul but dream continues
uh, Ramana said self-inquiry is the most direct route to realizing the self. What do you say about self-inquiry? I don't know. I never practice self-inquiry, so I can't comment on this. <laughs> <laughs> so she should be correct. I never walked in that path to see whether it's right or wrong. But Nama Ramana never uh, uh, practiced self-inquiry too. Right, right. Never. Felt. Right. But it's only for that. See what happens. The moment you start, who am I? Maybe it is helps initially to control the mind. But after some time, it becomes an auto-suggestion. Whenever thought comes, you ask, who am I? It subsides. But it never erases the thoughts. It becomes an auto-suggestion after some time. I think, I think the idea of self-inquiry is that, that when you, it brings your attention to, to the part that never changes. That if, if you do it in the beginning, maybe it's a kind of intellectual See, question. See, that moment when that you reach the final path and you are ready for that awakening or whatever you call, and anything will wake you up. May not be self phone career, a surrender, love, a devotion, a bhakti, anything will wake you up. Any path will take you there once you are ready for that. It's not the self phone career alone. It's not the only way. And when you say ready for that, yes. what do you mean by ready? Uh, you do all sadhanas frustrated, then you understand this is the ultimate truth. So that's what I think I meant when I asked, are there any qualifications? I meant, is there some, something as a preparation? Preparation happens. Uh. Preparation may not be in single birth, it continues. Preparation continues because it's like a, it's like a degree college, right? What happens is a degree college, you have to go to play school, play, play school, kindergarten, everywhere. Finally, you reach second uh, degree level. But there is no uh, qualification. Nobody can decide about the qualification that somebody from play school, they go to the directly to this. Nobody can say that. We are not here to decide it. Because we are seeing only one lifetime. We don't know the rest of the lifetime. So qualification is limited term. So you see somebody meditates for, an, for a year and he is enlightened and somebody is not meditated. Uh, they are meditating for 40-50 for years, they didn't get any glimpse of it. So we try to judge the qualification through this one lifetime. It's not possible. That's why I said we can't decide the qualification. We are not here to. Nobody can tell the qualification part. For that we should know the whole, whole lifetime, everybody's lifetime. We are seeing only the scene of your movie. We can't decide that. You have to see the. You should know the entire movie. I mean that in your case, you you saying you were awakened already when you were. Born. I never said I was awakened. <laughs> well, you were, you said you weren't asleep. Yeah, you'd never been asleep, so you didn't have to awake. Mm. So in that case, from what you're saying, this. This is the result of other parts of your movie, yeah? the, in the other lifetimes. Probably, see, I woke up from continuous of so many dreams, suppose I woke up. You try to identify my, uh, with myself. I don't know how, I, my la last dream is over. Now I'm just awake, you ask me to identify myself. Which dream I can identify with? With the last dream, or uh, dream lost to that, prior to that? I don't have any option. I don't know how to identify myself with any of these things. I'm not that, I'm not the dream. I'm not the dream character anymore to identify myself with. See, you're forcing me to tell something about the dreams. It's all over for me. There is no need for me to go back and relate myself to any of these dream characters. I'm having difficulty, can't you see? Yes. yes, you say about your dream, then I don't know how which dream I can relate to you. Right, right. But that's yeah. very beautiful, you see. That's why I think this is a very nice interview for me because it's so innocent, your re response, you know? It's, it's, yeah. it's very fresh and innocent, actually. Because if you continue to teach, lots of Westerners come, you'll have to find a teaching, you know? You'll have to find some techniques and No, I methods, don't take techniques. You know? I don't find any techniques. And then you'll have to, to write some books, like, you know? you have to have true. some books. I hope it will not then you'll, those then you'll need an ashram, you know? Oh, come on, all those accidents <laughs> may not happen to me. <laughs> All those, if you are really in truth, there is no need for you to compromise anywhere. Mm. There is no need for any compromise. All these things, whatever you are telling is a compromise. There is no need for us to compromise if you are really in the truth. Nothing matters. 
so if i tell the truth people believe let them believe i can't suggest a false uh, method for them false practice for them the moment i do that i compromise from the truth i fall back from the truth but you must already experience when western people come yeah when indian people come they want to make worship you and make you the divine mother and when western people come they want some technique yeah they want yeah. to know about enlightenment that's true but i said enlightenment is not and doesn't exist you are already illuminated you are already you are not ignorant to be enlightened that's what maybe that's a truth too i don't find any difference i don't find any difference if i find you are sleeping or if i find you are ignorant then i have to find out a method for you to wake up but when i find you are and i the same there is no difference you are the divine and i am the divine everybody is divine here so there is no need for me to find your practice to suggest you you pretend that you are sleeping you are not really sleeping too there is no need for me to compromise from the truth But you see, as a Western person, I'm conditioned to do things. You know, That's my true, life is all about doing things. You yeah. see, so <laughs> then I expect to have to do my enlightenment. You see. Yes, yeah, so true. But you are conditioned to do this. You can't this be. Way. You you'll never be successful as a teacher if you tell them that it's just Come on, grace. Come on, successful you know? is a worldly term. <laughs> successful is a worldly term. The one who stands in the truth doesn't care for success or failure. It's for the truth. If truth the uh, truth is uh, being accepted is accepted it's not it's not that's it i got nothing to do i don't have any personal motivation in this truth i don't have any personal business i can't make any personal business out of this truth don't you see that yeah i understand yeah yeah i'm no just provoking you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> It's not. There is no need for me to compromise anywhere. Right. It's not me or uh, it's not personal. I exist to compromise. Understand? It's a truth and no truth. So truth decides. I don't decide anything. There is no need for me to compromise that part. I no longer exist for any personal benefit. It's a success or failure of the truth. It's an eternal truth. If it fails, who cares? Let it fail. Then it can't be truth too. If it's not being accepted, then it can't be truth too. If it's really truth, if it's eternal, then it should be accepted. It's not my personal failure or success anywhere. I don't want to be a master or a guru to be also to say that I'm going to be a successful guru or not. It's not matter. So Ramana was asked, "When will the realization of the self be gained?" and he replied when the world which is what is seen has been removed there will be realization of the self which is the seer what is the true understanding of the world is a mind very simple world never exist outside our mind our mind is the world mind created the world the moment you identify that there is no mind you see yourself that's it to identify all these years with the mind the moment mind has gone the world is gone too well never exist beyond the mind mm. the and mind. how to remove the world yeah how this is what it is calls for the what he calls sadhana or practice you come back to that lengthy procedures right you're right yeah all these days you are thinking you are x right and i am telling or you know one day somebody everybody says you are not x you are a how this identification falls off or rather you are a prince son and you are on the road throughout your life you are lost you are lost child of your emperor and you are on the roads you are a prince you didn't know you were a prince you are a, in the beggar's god then somebody some one day prince comes and an emperor comes and tells you no you are not a beggar you are the prince you are my lost son the very moment you become the prince You, whether you wear the garb of beggar or not your mind in your mind you become the prince immediately you become the uh, i mean emperor of the country immediately the identification of the beggar falls off the same moment the emperor tells you why not this i am telling you are not the mind you are the uh, self why don't you throw off this it should happen in the same moment realization is as simple as that So 
when you say it's as simple as that, yes. you mean that actually you don't need 30 years of, of sitting in meditation or mantras. You can just in any moment see this truth yes. that I am the self. Yes. Mm. It's not necessary. <coughs> Nothing is necessary to see this truth. Mm. But to accept this, suppose emperor tells and you believe, suppose somebody else tells you may not be believing. To accept the emperor as it is, you need the sadhana. Because emperor comes and tells you, you are my son, you believe. Suppose somebody tells you, no, you are not the beggar, you are the king, you are the last child of the king, you are the prince, you will not accept that. The acceptance needs that sadhana, not the truth. You should accept somebody's words. That needs sadhana. <clears throat> it has been suggested that the mind must be destroyed for liberation to occur. Do you have a mind? No. No. Mind is illusion. I never existed in mind. I don't know what is mind is too. When you say you don't have a mind, mm. uh, for example, if you got in a car, you can drive the car, yeah? And before you worked as a tax officer, yeah. you, you could work with the computers and the figures and calculations, yeah? So for, for doing those kind of things, you anyway need a mind, yeah? Yeah, sure. Now also, uh, in the point of view to answer all these questions, I should have a dictionary in my mind to talk these words. Right? Right. But it comes from the spontaneity, you know, from the consciousness or whatever, from my inner being. It's not through the mind. Mind always manipulates, judges. Nothing of the sort happens here. Before I answer question, I don't I have to think about it, whether I am right or wrong. But here, nothing. That's the problem with the mind. Mind always calculates, manipulates things. But it comes from the spontaneity. Mind never existed here. I don't know whether I am right or wrong from your point of view. I don't care about it too. <clears throat> no judgment, nothing. It happens. So when you say you don't have a mind, you mean you don't have uh, the memories and the experiences and the worries and the tensions and the conditionings and the knowledge that other people gave you, the society and the teachers, you're saying that, that you don't have, um, uh, how can I say, you have a mind in the sense that you can do things when you need to operate your body, yeah? Yeah, that's, take, that that's sense, being taken care. Yeah. I said so many days I live without food too. So many months, so many months. That is beyond the physical plan. Same way, this is beyond the mental plan. Mind needn't be there now. All these emotions, attachment, whatever is, whatever you call as mind's quality, I don't have. The moment I say, even I feel ugly to say that, but it's it's true. I don't want to say I'm different too. Understand? I don't want to say the moment I say I don't have mind, I feel I'm different from you. That hurts me too. That's the truth. Could you say, I'm not attached to my mind? No. no. There's no mind at all to be attached. Attachment is a different thing. Attached to the, I don't have mind at all. I don't have, I don't think it exists. It's illusion. Once you cut off that uh, illusion, where it comes from, from, there's no mind at all. This is just an illusion. And are you telling me that before that, since you were very young, you actually never really had a mind? You never really were living in your thoughts? No. No. No thoughts. No. I don't know how to explain it more than that. Because so I was young, but I didn't have words to explain those stages. I was what I was. Maybe when you take, maybe when I was child, what I was, I am today. And I'll be the same. 
there is no difference in me i am the same so what you talk about the mind is well written very well no world doesn't exist for me there is no mind for me too i don't find anything a world exists for me see this body is in the world so you people see that i am moving the world because i talk you think that i am having mind too it looks apparently it looks like that but it's not this well when you yet. worked in the tax office yeah. it, it would look like you had a mind yeah to do this complicated calculation nothing of the sort it's been taken care i in fact i didn't study much of these things even computer i never studied the moment i wanted to learn computer i went to a hardware shop i mean hardware uh, uh, training institute those people were telling you are a tax consultant you don't have any electronics background and uh, we can't teach you this because it needs some electronic background so they were objecting my lecturers but after two three days they found me i started as if i know the subject i was in the class actually i was even correcting the master that he was wrong lecturer i, I told him he was wrong too and so many things he was really shocked he thought i learned it somewhere else and coming and teasing you <laughs> that's how it really i am not joking the student is still there who studied with me actually they were thinking that i learned it somewhere and came to class to harass these people but it was not that the moment i a little bit desire was there to learn it the knowledge came to me then i found there is no need for me to learn anything in this world whether this world or other world there is no need to learn everything is already available like it's like a, what you call is a uh, if you use a computer word is a server i was a client i am a client so whatever is recorded is being sent by the uh, server the client so the sort of happens so the ultimate takes care of that i need not have anything on my own just your monitor is enough no need of having a cpu or anything so whatever server sends the client receives it that's it i need not have a memory on my own it's true for everybody too mm. when western people come with their minds yeah with their uh suffering yeah their worries their tension you know their fears yeah you you can understand immediately that this is an illusion yeah it's not this is not true yeah true. so what do you say to Why them oh western or indian all sufferings and all pains are only illusions and you are dreaming and you think that you are having a nightmare you are chased by a tiger I know you are dreaming. But it's an illusionary tiger and the illusionary fear too. Whether any suffering, whether it's a Westerner or Indian or whatever, be that all sufferings are illusionary. Too. Imagine you suffer. That's it. And there is no suffering really. Everything is perfect here. Everything is exactly as it should be. Yes, perfect. I can say that you are dreaming you are dreaming 101 times but still you will dream still you have fear for the tiger i can't help it because it's perfect it should be like that yourself will wake up from the dream one day and say oh all these times i was sara says by imaginary tiger but you will ever till then it's perfect perfect for you to be afraid now perfect for you to have the nightmare now can't say this wrong it's perfect so uh, i am telling what i feel also perfect i feel is illusion but if it is real both are perfect so you're saying that you accept whatever is coming it it can be happy or it can be unhappy that's true it can be sad it can be angry it can be blissful no yeah, mind is illusion so why you bother whether mind mind is angry or mind is jealousy or mind is suspicious Why mind itself is illusionary? Why we have to bother with this negative quality or positive quality of the mind? Everything is perfect. Is mind's nature is like that? Mind mind is like this. Mind can be angry. Mind can be peaceful. Mind can be happy. Mind can be unhappy. But it is illusion. So which is good in illusion? Which is bad to say that is this is good illusion? This is bad illusion? This illusion is illusion. It's total illusion. It's perfect. Whatever comes. 
And what do you say to somebody who comes and you first you tell them it's an illusion, but still they're suffering, yeah? They come every day to see you with this pain, yeah? Some pain is there because of something they believe, yeah? They believe it so strongly that they can't just, you know, throw away. What do you say to them? I say the same thing. Perfect. You suffer. It's perfect. You are frustrated. It's perfect. So many people uh, seek in the world and come back. We meditated for 10 years, 12 years, and we didn't get it. We are frustrated. I say this uh, frustration is perfect. I can say that it's, uh, you are seeking is waste, but it's not real for them. My knowledge and my truth is not real for you. It's not your truth. You have to find out your own truth. So I say this. What you seek is uh, stupidity. There is no enlightenment. But still, your mind can't accept that. Tomorrow, you, you, can, uh, you need not meditate for one week. Oh, there is no enlightenment. I need not meditate. But next week, again, mind comes back and says, what are you doing? It's rubbish. You have to sit and meditate. That's what mind says. So you follow the mind. That's going to give you the happiness. Not me. My truth is mine. Your truth is yours. Till you find out the truth for yourself, you have to walk in the path. Suppose you start from home, I say this is your home own. You need not travel anywhere. You can't accept this. You have to travel, you have to fed up, you have to be frustrated and come back to the same place and realize this is the home where you started actually. That's the mind is. It's perfect. So the moment you start, I start the journey. If I say no, there is no need for you to search outside, this is your home, you can't realize it. You have to find it for yourself. That's the mind. But you're also telling the people that it's just grace, that you in a way can't do anything. See, there is no other way to tell them, right? Grace is just a word we use. Because it's the, there is no way, grace is not outside us. Grace is us. We are the grace. We don't have anything external. So they, they say, though, we waited what to do. And I say, just like a fruit in a tree. It, it, the moment it drives, it falls from the tree. Till then you have to wait for that. If you are not falling, that means you are not ripe enough. Grace is the word we manage the crowd. <laughs> it's the word, no other way to express that waiting, right? Then they will ask why grace happens to somebody and not to us, all those things. So I say it's like a fruit. If you are ripe, you will fall back at any moment. If you are not falling, that means you are not ripe enough to fall from the tree. So it happens. But ultimately, everybody is reaching the same place. So nothing there to worry about it. It's perfect. It's me today, tomorrow somebody else. So it doesn't make any difference. It's not my own effort that I am in this state. It's ultimate who took care of me. And he takes care of everything. So the ultimate reality which is true for me is true for yourself too. It takes care of you too. Even me? Oh, With all my pain, <laughs> suffering. <laughs> Even me? <laughs> Why not you? <laughs> Why not you? <laughs> because I'm not worthy. <laughs> then yeah, I am not also. <laughs> you selected an unworthy person. <laughs> <laughs> because I think you know this this sense of unworthiness is actually comes from the mind. It comes, Again, from, comes the, from the mind. Yeah, it's just mind. Mind it, says this. It's I'm a very not common. Unworthy. It's a very common. Uh, it's sense. a very tricky mind. Suppose you corner it. You know you are not worthy for that. Then it will call. No, no, I am most worthy. I did meditation for so many years. I am most eligible. It's the mind. If you go positive, it will take the negative stand. If you go to the negative, it will take the positive stand. That's it. I'm very glad that I, I brought the video camera, you know, because it's a nice, um, very nice picture. Because many times you, you say something and I feel that in the silence around what you say with words, in the way you look, in the way you laugh, in the way you smile, and the way you do nothing, which is all recorded on the camera, is also very important for people to understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So Blueprint is going to be a book only, not a video CD, right? <laughs> <laughs>
Well, it's, it's interesting. It, I started as a book, you know, oh. and then I didn't have a video camera. When I started, I didn't have a video camera. And then I had a video camera. Mm -hmm. And then somebody said, why don't you um, make a series of videos, you know, because people okay. can enjoy to watch the interview. That's right. So actually, my plan now is to have a book with some videos also. Oh, video tapes. Video tapes, because it, actually I think it's true that people can enjoy to be kind of part of the interview. Yeah. What about vastness, the tendencies of the mind? Mm -hmm. Must these be removed before self-realization can become permanent? <laughs> Okay, to talk about the vasana, who is having the vasana? The mind is having the vasanas. Mind is having the vasana. It has got nothing to do with the self-realization. Well, the self already, you imagine you are having your mind and you are having this vasanas, part of the sickness. Mind itself is illusion. And where this vasanas? There's another part of the illusion only. Mm. And it's otherwise. Maybe the moment you know you are the self, and there is no mind, mind is an illusion, vasana never existed. Either you are in the mind or you are not in the mind, that's it. Mind storm, if you like, suddenly it will come, you know, everything is calm, suddenly this, and it will be a vasana, it won't be just um, conditionings of mind, it'll be some silly pattern that seems to reoccur, which is what I'm calling, you know, vasanas or tendencies. So the quality is a little different from, from um, what I would call the mind, normal mind things. It's kind of persistent. And I can also say that I know a number of people, for example, who um, spent time with Papaji. And he was having a very powerful energy. Many people woke up to the self. Then they would go away and come back and say, I lost it. And most of them had this experience with, with vastness, you know, pulling them somehow out of that. Can you say something about vastness in that? The moment you find vasanas, that means you are still in the mind. If vasana exists for you, then still you are in the mind, you are not out of the mind. Once the moment you lost the identity, whether you even had a glimpse of it, lost the once you lost it, it's lost forever. The moment you find it's illusionary, it no longer exists for you, the mind. The mere thing you are telling that you are still having vasanas, that means you are still in the mind. Maybe you are having a much quieter mind, much friendlier mind. Maybe mind is your slave, we can say that you are the master of the mind. But still mind exists for you. Because vasanas exist for you, right? That's it. Nothing. So once you get it, no, no way of losing it, if it's true, truly you got it. Some parts of the mind, like you know the mind has created the whole world, whole creation is from the mind. So it's easy for the mind to create uh, hundreds of uh, enlightenments too. You'll get such a peace, such a happiness, you feel that you are almost enlightened, or close to that, or you are almost enlightened. But after some time, mind comes back. That's the reason, because it happens in the mind. Some parts of the mind are so peaceful, some, because some parts are agitated, very aggressive mind, anger, everything. Some parts are so peaceful, like an ocean. But still, it happens in the mind. Are you saying that you can, you, can, um, you can feel that, oh, I'm awake, but actually the awakening is happening still in the mind. It's not beyond the mind. Awakening happens only in the mind. Because mind is sleeping. Mind wants awakening. Awakening is a term, enlightenment is a term related to the mind, not to us. The moment you say you are awakened, it happens in the mind very well. It's not the truth. The moment you say you are awakening on such day, that means you are sleeping all those days. It's the mind which sleeps to wake up. If you are really the true self, if you are in the, in the self, if you lost the identification with the mind and you know that you are the true self, there is no awakening and uh, enlightenment for you. 
so it's happening in the mind the moment you talk about vasana it still happens in the mind mind is the one who was bound by the karmic class it's illusion total illusion karmic and vasana sir the moment you talk about it if it is real to you then mind is real to you too once you are free all these days you tied your the with the rope tied yourself with your rope then i saw illusion i say then you are free that's it if you feel that rope is hurting you somewhere here and there that means still you are bound by the revolutionary rope there is no bondage for the one who is free the moment you found the rope is illusion so you can't find any bruises in your body so in the moment you found mind was illusion you can't find any more vasanas vasanas are like bruises you say still i got the bruises in my body that means still you are having the tropes in your body still at least you thought the tropes were in were real for you rope was imaginary At the end of uh, his book Self Inquiry Ramana says he who is thus endowed with a mind that has become subtle and who has the experience of the self is called a jivan mukta is this the state that can be called self realized and when one is immersed in the ocean of bliss and has become one with it without any differentiated existence one is called a viha mukta is this a, it is the state of viha mukta that is referred to as the transcendent turiya this is the final goal is this the state that one can call enlightenment i don't believe in enlightenment i am again i am telling i don't believe in enlightenment at all this question becomes relevant right I don't believe in enlightenment or self realization I am in awakening. I don't believe it. The mind was ignorant to become enlightened, right? So you're saying there can't be self-realized and enlightened. There's not even anything. Yeah. These are names just given to identify to cross beyond the mind. These are states to go beyond the mind. So I'll just words. The moment I say that oh yes, I am. You are enlightened, or enlightened one is that. That means I am limiting you. I am saying you are ignorant to be enlightened. The moment I talk about enlightenment, that means I am treating you as ignorant. The moment I say that you are awake, about talking about your awakening, it seems that I am meaning that limiting you that you are sleeping now. That stupidity. You are not sleeping. You are pretending to sleep. You are not sleeping really. Imagine you are sleeping rather. you are not sleeping same as i am hmm? no difference so i don't believe in this enlightenment at all so you certainly don't believe in any states of enlightenment no states yeah. there is no state states always belongs to the mind these states and uh, procedures methods success failures whatever you talk is related to the mind not to the self self is beyond all these things there are no state in the self the self the seat how can we put stages in this i mean swami shivananda from rishikesh he's a famous uh, saint he he has a book where he talks of the seven stages of enlightenment maybe true suppose i talk something about something beyond the hill you can't understand it raw I talk about some uh, particular place beyond this hill you can't understand because you can't see the hill you can you are seeing only the hill not beyond it so maybe to uh, take you beyond the hill they say this first you see this tree see that one see this one this is a way to show you the ultimate reality there is no way because you can't comprehend that all these are just uh, tricks to take you beyond this to make you interested in this So you're saying because he had an ashram he needed a teaching and then he needed a book. 
<laughs> I don't comment about it. What is his face? He's a master of his phone. He knows what he does. Right, right. Because you are trying to point out something which can't be pointed out. That's the difficulty with all the people, right? You want to comprehend something which is beyond the mind. And through the mind, you try to comprehend that. Which is beyond the mind, it's very difficult. So people say this, okay, you go up to this hill, then you can see that. But if you go up to the hill, then they'll say you cross the hill, then you can see this. It's a way to make you walk. If you say this is 100 kilometers from here, then you'll be fainter. So I just say, okay, you walk 20 kilometers, you'll, tree, uh, you'll see a tree, there you'll get the guidance. Then you walk 20 kilometers and that guidance will say, you walk another 20 kilometers, you find somebody else, that's the end of it. But you'll walk all up to the 100 kilometers like this. That's the way to make you walk, you don't feel the burden. So he's a master of his phone, he knows what he does. That's a way, way to make the people, that's a practice rather. Phone when you go into a, a bookshop, yeah, you find a whole section of books, spiritual books, yeah, and they're full of all these things, you know, seven stages. I think there's one Western master, he had five stages, and he mm -hmm. was on the fifth mm -hmm. stage, and Ramana Mahashi was on the fourth stage, you oh. know, all these things, you know. Good. So you're saying really that all these books are nonsense, yeah, because they're attempts to tell what is on the other side of the mountain. I know you are trying mountain. to fix me up. <laughs> you are trying to fix me up. You are <laughs> trying to make it. But I don't believe in these stages. You are that. There is a stage in the self. Who can create stages in the self? I don't want to ridicule the books or what the authors. I don't know. But that's what I feel. There is no stages. Mm. That's what the truth to me is. There are no stages. Oh, uh, then we, uh, somebody will say there are 100 stages. You walk only 4 stages. Then Ramana has to walk the rest of the 96 stages, right? So who fixes the stages here? Mm. There are no stages. Either you are the self or you are not. Either you are in the mind or you are not in the mind. That's it. There is no like close. Some people ask me about I am very close, so close to that. Close to the truth. There is nothing so you have close to promise me when I come back and interview you in 10 years, you don't have any stages, okay? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Maybe, <laughs> maybe people will say that I am not in any of I these stages. I should maybe. come in the back of the crowd and say, hey, what about stages? You know? Maybe you will be saying, maybe you will be saying, uh, you may, who knows, people may say that I, I was never in any of these stages. Mm. Oh, she's in the play school, she never reached any stage. Right, that's she's right. She's not there because I'm going to talk the same way. <laughs> people say, oh, she doesn't never reach any of even first stage. Right, right. So there are hundred stages. Right. Oh. That's right. Then they probably will say that. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. yeah. You'll, have, <laughs> I don't you'll need a book, I think. Maybe your husband can write it, you know, no, with no. stages. You know? Oh, come on. <laughs> 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 write, write about me. Impossible. All oh, stupidity. Whatever he is going to rub over, write about the positive stupidity. It's all dream over. What's the use of writing about those dreams? It's all over for me. Nothing matters now. Mm -hmm. Nothing. It's all. I'll say whatever he writes, I'll say it's all false. He can't write about me anyway. <laughs> That's true, no? What I experience, he doesn't know. What I am, he doesn't know. <coughs> he can't write about that that way. Only I have to write if at all. The moment I start writing, it becomes so ugly and full of falsehood. The moment I start explaining this, mm. it's all what I'm talking to you is all. All your ten questions are false. It's not true. That's it. That's the truth. What I am talking is also, the moment I start explaining the unexplainable, the moment I start reducing them so into the words, it lost the beauty, it lost the truth already. Truth can't be told. So it lost the beauty, it lost the truth already, just falsehood. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. I am mean, I'm, I'm completely agreeing with what you say actually, that's really true. And there's this but still, we want to write your book. <laughs> but, but still, I, I'd like to... Um, yeah, close to truth. Maybe we I can say close to truth. <laughs> at the beginning of the book, we can write, you know, that this is all rubbish. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't, don't buy this book. You know? oh, that's the way to sell your book. You are a shrewd businessman. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> now people will be all the more interested. The moment you talk about rubbish, 
Yeah. Then they are all the more interested. If you say it's all truth, you buy it, they will not buy it. Right. The moment you say it's all rubbish, they will buy it first. Is that a good technique, you think? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, one of the nice things about doing this book is that, um, you know, I get to visit all kind of interesting teachers and saints and masters and things, you know? That's right. So it's a very nice way, it's a very nice way to meet you actually, you see. I know you now in a different way than one hour ago, you know? Mm -hmm. So actually for me personally, it's a beautiful way to meet people, you know? That's true. And I don't really mind about the video and the book actually. To be honest, it's not, <laughs> it's not my main interest, you know? But I have a couple more questions. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> See, after a falsehood, you're asking me questions. <laughs> mm. Well, I think this will be the best-selling video, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's very lovely, because you're very, as I, as I felt, you know, when I asked Dorothy to, to introduce me, I feel your, your answers are very spontaneous and fresh, you know? It's very beautiful. So you think that if you come after 10 years, I lose my freshness? Possibly, <laughs> possibly. No we'll way. see, you know. Maybe. <laughs> I'll, knock on the, from I'll come and knock on the door of your ashram, you know, and I'll be the... the oh, come on, I don't think I'll be having one. No? Okay. Ashrams are uh, cages. Ah. They're meeting the monsters. I'm a free bird. I don't want to limit myself anywhere. So the moment you have ashrams for ashram, you have to compromise the truth. I have to find out some practice to teach people. Yeah, you need a big money. practice. You need a big practice money, hall, yeah. you know, yeah, meditation true. hall or practice sadhana hall, you know. Uh, and then you need some. Money, I have to teach then you something. need some practices. Yeah, yeah, maybe way to enlightenment. I have to teach them some ten steps. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not going to well, work with me because I am not uh, dream and ugly. You can become much. famous by saying there is no enlightenment, you know, and okay. there is no steps. And there's yeah. certainly no stages. I don't know. But I don't want to become famous by that. It's the truth, what I feel. If I'm, maybe I may become infamous too. Who cares about it? In fact, it? it would be a good book title, you know. After this book, I can do a new book. Uh, mm. No enlightenment, no stages, no anything. Yeah. <laughs> no mind first. No mind. Yes. Okay. No mind first. Mm. No mind, no enlightenment. Somebody today talked to me about killing the ego. I said, ego is a self-illusion. It's the ego which says to kill me. It's one of the ego trips too. That's a new phrase ego likes. Oh, kill my ego. But again, that's ego. Ego itself is illusion. <coughs> so I have the perfect question now for you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> it, ap <laughs> it appears essential to meet a guru and to stay with that guru. Who is the guru? What is the guru's role? How to recognize a true guru? Good. I never had your guru, so I don't know how to answer for this. Yeah. And I am not your guru too? Not your guru too? <clears throat> so you want to know how to recognize your guru? Do, do you think it's important to have a guru? Yes and no. Mm. Yes, yes and no. It all depends how you are. Some people like a dependent child, they need some physical presence of a guru. They need a guru. Some people are already strong enough, independent in the world. They don't require a guru. So the moment you say that it all depends on the indi individual growth, individual strength. So I can't say you need a guru or you don't need a guru. It all depends on your individual strength can be common. This question can't be, it's a personal question, like, it depends on individuals. There's no common answer for this. So, to identify a guru, true guru, if you are really seeking guru, you know. The moment you meet your guru, you know, you know that is your guru. That's it. There's no need. And Guru is the one who never identifies himself as a Guru first. Guru can't say, no, I'm a Guru, I'm a great master, I'm here to teach you. No, Guru will say, true Guru will say that. Because Guru is, the moment you make somebody as a Guru and you become disciples, there is a difference, right? There you make a difference. 
but he saw same guru never finds anybody else there is no others for him you go to in out of your uh, seeking or searching you go to a guru and say say i am in ignorance you enlighten me but guru never finds that you are in ignorance first he never finds you in ignorance first i know he knows that you are just having the illusion that you are ignorant so he never says i am your guru and i am here to save you no guru true guru will say that he never finds anybody else in the world but is he who exists everywhere so the moment you make a guru disciple relationship is always a disciple who makes a relationship not the guru for the guru there is no relationship because he never seems himself as a guru moment i say i am a guru and you are my disciple it's gone the truth has vanished i am not here the moment i say i am in a caliber of teaching i got the capacity to teach the truth has gone there diluted truth is diluted the moment you say I mean, what what I understand from talking with you is that um, it's just this moment, yeah. It's just this very moment now, this very fresh moment, and I can say that my experience of meeting you is like that because I turned up in your house at your house, and you came out, and then after a few minutes, I said, "How about an interview and a video?" And you just said yes, you know. It wasn't such complicated, you know. everything is simple that's what i experience with you you know it's simple and easy and you just decide in this moment like that yeah and you know i was ready to come next week or something you know but somehow now is the moment and we just do the, do it now and in the end it's just like that no. <laughs> huh i don't know it happened uh what being decided is happened the sun mm. so i only have one more question oh. <coughs> seekers often have a curious idea about the enlightened state anyway you say there's no enlightened state yeah so For example, that the enlightened person sees the world as a grey nothing while sitting in eternal bliss. Please describe your typical day and how you perceive the world. Well, never existed. Never exist for me is seen. I exist everywhere. Sai was sitting in front of me and asked me a question. There is no others here. There is no others here. It's only I exist here. Nobody else. And if you want to be more uh, in the worldly term, to be humble, I say God exists. I am God, and you are God, and everything is God here. If you don't like that, because this I is very confusing for most of the people. They say it's whether small I or big I. <laughs> so we use the word God. God exists here. It's nothing else. It's single. There are no, I mean, many here. It's only one. It's God. It's God exists here. That's it. You are God. I am God. It's all various rays of the same source. There's no difference at all. I don't find any difference here. So can I ask you in your personal case 
over a period of some days or weeks, you are mostly I can experience you as as in peace and 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 I perhaps you would use the word bliss, yeah, happiness. But are there also times when you feel very sad or angry or other kinds of feelings? I don't think any of this strong feeling exists for me. Even I am laughing when I am scolding or angry with somebody else. That's the truth. I enjoy that, being angry too. So there is no real anger in that. And usually this anger, angry anger, I don't think I get often, like, unless somebody really needs it. It's a way for, way for correcting people, that's it. When we need it. It's not with many. Because nothing there to be angry with. Like, everything is perfect, so I don't feel anything. Any of the strong emotions, but everything I enjoy. It's fun, <laughs> rather. Being angry so what also. about the word Leela, you know, divine play? Yeah. Is that your life? Your life is a kind of divine play? It's not a kind of divine play. It's a divine play. It's Leela only. Only, only Leela? Yeah, only fun. <laughs> only fun. Yeah. Right, right. Leela is nothing but Whether the Whether you're having fun with anger or having fun with bliss? Fun itself is bliss. Bliss is fun. Leela is nothing but ang the bliss. Anger is also fun. Yeah. No, no, and, and anger is not what people perceive. So I say some harshly, change the tone. This is it. They say it's angry. It's not anger. It's not an emotion. If I talk like this, the world interprets, oh, I'm talking softly. The moment I change the voice, they say, yes, uh, she's angry. That's what, I, what you perceive, not my actions. It's your reaction to my action. So there is no real anger. It's fun being uh, talking in your loud voice. Then you say, oh, she's angry. That's not the truth. And it never happens because I don't want to talk in loud voice. I know people will be hurt. I don't want to hurt others. Though others never exist for me, I know still they are having the mind. Still they are suffering with the mind. So I can't be harsh to them. <coughs> no other strong emotions for me. I don't think so. It's all fine. That's the whole problem. I found the whole life was full of this. So many times, I found it a real problem for others. Maybe for him too. <laughs> Must be a problem for him to live with you, no? Yeah, that you, you are taking care of your life. Fancy marrying a woman like you. Yeah, that's yeah? right. He must be very special to marry I was somebody. Not, yeah, I was all the time having fun. I never, nothing was serious in my life. That's the whole problem. That Leela, what you call it, was too much in my life. <laughs> 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 Everything was fun. Okay, so what? Right. Attitude. All right. So what? So what was my attitude? Mm. Yeah, after the record, I can tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> after the record, I can tell you something. So what okay. attitudes? Oh, okay, some secret. Okay. <laughs> not so secret. Before, it's not for mothers. Yeah. So, f so before we finish, is there anything else you'd like to say? You know, maybe I didn't ask the. You have something. Maybe if you know my answers, you would have prepared different questions. <laughs> 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 Am I not right? <laughs> Would you like me to? If you uh, would you like me to find some other question right now for you? Is there something else you would like to express? Something no, we didn't nothing, talk? Nothing. Something we missed? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> if you miss something, you only you know. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Thank you too. <laughs>